Here we go. So today what we're going to do is we're going to continue our look at multiplication, but we're going to look at it in a slightly different form. Now remember, we're spending this whole part of this, the lesson on algebra about building good habits, right? So we've talked a lot about how many parts are there in a term? Four. And every time you use a term, you use those four parts in order, right? We saw it when we combined like terms. We just saw it when we did the multiplication. So we're trying to build really good habits so that later, when you're actually working these problems, you won't have to stop and think about, ah, oh, what do I need to do here? Yeah? Well, you're going to see the same lesson, but with a little bit more next year. The same lesson, but with a little bit more in year 10. Because the basis of, for good, algebra, good habits in algebra are the, what makes the difference difference between success in high school and not success in high school math, okay? So keep it, keep it in mind as we go. So today we're going to talk a little bit about brackets. Now, if you'll remember when we talked about multiplying, right, we, in algebra we usually just use no symbol at all to represent multiplication, right? But we also remember can, can use a bracket, but remember that it only means multiplication if there is absolutely nothing between the coefficient or the multiplier and the bracket, okay? There must be nothing between the multiplier and the bracket. So what I want to practice with first, before we do anything else, is I want to, you to practice identifying this, okay? So we're gonna just do a little exercise in, is it multiplication or not? I feel like a game show host, okay? Yes? Yeah. Um, uh, you also remember this because I was looking at last lesson, last, last, last lesson, where you overlap the bracket and the bracket has like mm -hmm. I can't remember, I might remember the numbers, but with, does it, Remember, it doesn't really matter where they are as long as there's nothing between the bracket and the number. All three of those brackets cases mean multiply. What if it's like 4a in a big bracket? Or does it have to be? Well, there would have to be something outside the bracket, the bracket to multiply it. But yeah, if you have 4a inside a bracket like that, that still means multiply the 4 times the a, right? Okay, but there's nothing on the outside to multiply it. Yes. Okay. All right, well, let me, let's just go through some. Okay, so I'll make it really easy on you first. Four bracket X. Multiply or not? Multiply. Yes, that means four times X. So yes, that means to multiply. Okay? Wait, was that a time symbol? Or... It's a bracket. So a bracket is a multiplication. It is one of the symbols that we use for multiplication. Okay? All right. Now, yeah, that's the, that's the X, X, not a multiplication symbol. Okay, now here we go. How about... This one, does that mean to multiply the four times the X? No. Absolutely not. And the reason not is right there. Oops, sorry. It's a plus, not a multiply. It's a plus, not a multiply. Did you add that circle? I'm trying to, but I'm not very good at adding the circle. There we go. So that means that it's no longer multiplication. Do you see the difference? There's a plus between them. So that means you're not multiplying, but what's the C word that means add, subtract? Com combining. combining. There you go. So we'd be combining in that case. All right. Good job. Okay. How about this one? Does that mean multiply? No. Absolutely not. Because there's something between the, the multiplier and the bracket. Okay? Pretty easy? Yeah. All right. Wait till you're trying to do it really fast and you get all confused. So make sure that it stays easy, right? The only time it means to multiply is if they're side by side, no, nothing between them. Okay? Now, you could, in a really strange world, see something like this. But the symbol between them is a multiplication symbol, so you know it means multiply, right? So that's very odd, but it can it could possibly happen to you, but eh. that, means it's that, multiply. that still means multiply, right? That dot is completely redundant because you could just write it like this, right? Yep. 
which is even more redundant because you could just write it like that, right? Why, hmm. Then why do people add brackets? Okay. One of the, you're going to see that we add brackets a lot to be able to stay focused and stay organized and keep the operations true. You're not going to see it so much right now, but as you build the algebraic system, you're going to see that adding brackets is critical. Okay? So, have we talked about, so when we talk about substitution, brackets are essential. Okay? All right, here we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at some steps for clearing brackets. Anybody remember their order of operation? Yes. Yes. And the order of operations say that brackets need to be done when? First, right? Very first. Okay. Now, you bet. Way back when, the order of operations. Steps for clearing the brackets. First thing is we're always going to look where? If you look at your first page, you'll find out, right? Inside the bracket, right? So inside, well, we might not have talked about the whole, all three steps because we hadn't expanded it to this level yet. So inside the brackets. Now, it's going to be very rare that you have anything inside to do. But if there is anything inside the bracket to work on, you need to do that when? First. So if you had to add something to add or subtract or whatever inside, you would do that first. The second thing you're going to look for, which you're not going to have in this course at all, but you know that I'm always looking forward to where you're going, is you're going to look for an exponent. And by exponent, I mean an exponent on the bracket itself. Oh, yes. It's not inside, but on the bracket itself. I'll show, you, I'll show you an example of what it looks like, but it's beyond the work that we're going to do in this class, okay? All right. And then finally, the third and last thing, which is also the thing that happens most. So which thing do you normally do you think people go to straight away? The multiplier. The third thing, which is the multiplier, yeah. Everybody always wants to jump straight to that because that's what you see the most, right? What you're used to doing is what you always want to do, right? So you need to make sure and slow yourself down and ask yourself, are the other, do the other two happen, right? Are they there? So every time we do one of these, I'm going to ask you, where do I look first? You're going to say where? Inside. Inside. Uh, what do I look for second? Exponent. Exponent. What do I do last? And that's the multiplier, which is called coefficient. a coefficient. Exactly. So you look for a coefficient, which is just a fancy word for the multiplier. Because remember, coefficient of a term is always a number. But coefficient doesn't mean a number. Coefficient means a what? Mul multiplier. multiplier, okay? It just happens to be a number in that particular case. Talk about the black shoes business, right? I love that analogy for you, the guys. That's good, okay? All right, if you're wearing your uniform, what color shoes are you wearing? Black, black right? But does that mean all, color, all shoes are always black? No. Nope, but are they still shoes? Yep, it's just a specific, specific case for specific shoe. I'll, no, it's a multiplier. It's totally different. It's just a multiplier. Because an exponent means to multiply something times itself over and over. An exponent means to multiply, but it means to multiply it times itself. Okay? All right, so here we go. So what I'm going to do is, first, I'm just going to write down a few examples. We're not going to multiply them out. I just want you to answer the, the questions and tell me what's what. Okay? Say, for example, we have 4 times x plus Two. And then I'm going to go ahead and throw an exponent on there just for kicks. It's not going to happen for you. So do I have a bracket? Yes. So if I, were, if I were to get rid of this bracket, the first place I'd look is where? Inside. inside. Looking inside, be careful and make me proud here. Can I add an x and a 2? No. Because no. x is a x term and 2 is a number term, right? Now I'm going to introduce another new word here for you, and that is the word constant. Two is a constant. Do you anybody think of why? X is a variable and two is a constant. Can anybody tell me why we might call those a constant? Um, because whereas variables can change, mm -hmm. um, numbers can't. They exactly. always have to be the same number if, Perfect. if they're compared with variables. Exactly. So the variables can change, and 2 is 2 no matter what, isn't it? So if they're called a constant. 
So again, con- we need to be building that terminology, that library of terms. So if I say a constant, you know I mean a number. If I say a variable, you know I mean a letter. Right? Okay? A variable or letter. Okay? Good job. So can you add an x and a 2? Nope, because you can't combine variables and constants. Yeah? Okay? Um, but that's, yeah, but this is still not combining. All right? Hold on. So, all right, now, what's the last thing I look for? That, I'm sorry, then I look for a what? I'm sorry. Exponent. Second thing, an exponent. And you see how I have the little three hanging out above the bracket there? That means it's an exponent. Again, we're not going to be talking about exponents right now but for, for brackets, but you'll be doing lots of them later. And it's a critical skill. I can tell you that that's one of the things that really causes my year 11's trouble. But not because it's hard. It's just because you forget to look for it because it doesn't happen very often. Is that a three or a two? Okay. Sure. That's a three up there oh. now. Yeah. Okay. All right. And the last and final thing I look for is the... Oh. Coefficient or multiplier, and again, we know it's a coefficient or a multiplier because it's right up against the bracket with no plus or minus between them. Okay? Is this good? Mm-hmm. All right. Well, but if you look at this particular bracket, how many terms do I have inside? Two. Two. Remember, remember, every time you see a plus or a minus, you know it's the beginning of a new term. So I have, this is one term, and that's a second term. And if you have a coefficient with more than one term inside, that's going to change things a little bit. And so we need to talk about how to clear, how to, how to work with a bracket, how to deal with the coefficient. Okay? So, if there is more than one term inside the bracket, Okay, more than one term. So you need to know where, how to tell when one term stops and the next one begins. It's everywhere you see a plus or a what? Minus, Minus right? Because the sign is always the start of a new term. Okay, if there's more than one term inside the bracket, you must multiply every term By the coefficient. Oh, that's so, that's okay, let's write that down. So you must multiply every term by that coefficient. So in this case, I have two terms inside my bracket, which means I'm going to be multiplying what? Twice. Twice. What if I had ten terms in there? Ten times. I'd be multiplying ten times. Right? Doesn't matter. Yes. Don't worry about it. I just wanted to show you what it looks like, but we're not going to mess with it right now. Um, two things. Um, one, if you like put like the four names to the bracket, could that by any chance mean something like divided by or nope. plus? No. And um, say you do it ten times, do you have to add those numbers? No, because if they would have been at bit, if you were able to add them together, you would have done that when. So you already would have done that. They're not going to become like terms just because you multiply them. Yeah, but then what do you do if you have to multiply them times? You just, write just get all ten of them. You'll have ten, ten term answer. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't quite understand that. All right. Well, we're going to do lots of examples. So hold on just a second. All right. Here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down some, we're going to do some examples together. And of course, we're going to be doing some work individually and I'm going to call on you. You know you love that part. So what I wanted what I want to look at first is we're just going to go to Education Perfect and look at this lesson. This is where your homework is going to come from just to make it easier on uh, some lazy teacher. Could be me. All right. So so what we're talking about here, the process of of multiplying that, that out is called expanding a bracket. Okay? And expanding because we're doing the operation. Remember when we remember when we rewrote all those letters as a times a times a times a? That meant we were expanding it. We were doing the multiplication. So we're expanding these brackets. So keep remember that word. You're going to see it quite a lot. So if you look at the at the at the bracket they have here. Sorry if I keep slipping into parentheses, but that's what I call them back home. So in so here we have a bracket, right? 
And first we look inside, but can I, I have an X and a one. Can I add an X and a one? No. no. Is there an exponent on the bracket? No. Is there a coefficient? In other words, something right up in front of the bracket? Yes. yes. So that means take that coefficient of three and multiply it times how many of the terms inside? All of, terms. All of them. So you'll see they've taken three times the X. And when I'm doing this, guys, and I'm gonna tell you, I cannot emphasize how much this helps. I usually draw little lines to show me what I'm multiplying by. So they took the three times the X. Well, three times X is just what? Three. 3x. You can't multiply a 3 and an x. It just sticks them side by side. And then finally, 3 times positive 1 is? Po yeah, what kind of 3? Positive 3. Okay? I have to have that sign there. And so this thing multiplied out just gives me 3x plus 3. Couldn't be any easier. Keep it that way. Yes? You said that you don't add them together. Well, they're not added together. 3x plus 3. The answer is 3x plus 3. Okay. We, can't add, we can't add them together, so you just put it as... It's, it's got a plus between it because there's a plus between the terms originally, right? Okay, so that's just a sign that's separating them. So they're not technically added together. Mm -hmm. uh, if you had... Uh... Hey, don't worry about if you had. Let me... Okay? If you have an if you had question, we'll see it. Everything that you, you're going to need to know, you're going to see. Now... Do, can they get way more complicated? Yes. You bet. Are we worried about that? No. We're worried about what we're going to be worried about right now. Okay? So, okay. Let's see what's next. All right. So we're going to talk about these and just look at tons of them. Okay? So if you look at this, some expressions having brackets, by expanding them, you can get rid of the bracket. So here we have a 3 and then a bracket, x plus 2. Right? So... First place I look is inside. Can you add an X and a 2? No. no. Is there an exponent? Yeah. No. Not an exponent, right? That'd be, that'd be right there, Then there's not one. Is there a coefficient? Yeah. Yes. That means take every th term inside and multiply it by what? The th three. 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 Yeah? And inside, I have how many terms? Two. Two, two terms. An X and a positive 2. Not a 2, right? A what? positive 2. If you don't have a sign, you're going to cause yourself some trouble. All right, so first I'll take the 3 times the x, and 3 times an x, I can't really do anything but just what? 3x. Yeah, just stick them to get side by side. That's where you get the 3x. Then I'm going to take the 3 times the positive 2. Positive times a positive is a? Positive and 3 times 2 is 6. If you don't have the sign, you don't have an answer. It's not right without the sign. So my completed answer is 3x plus 6. Okay. Now, can I add that 3 and 6 together? They're both numbers. No, because no, 3 is not a number. What is it called if it's in front of that x? Co well, yeah, it's an algebraic term, it, but it's a coefficient of an algebraic term. So, yeah, you're exactly right. It's the, it's the coefficient of an algebraic term. And a coefficient can never be combined with a, what's the new word we just learned for numbers? Constants. Oh, constants. Yeah, there you go. Co coefficients and constants are not the same, right? So they can't be combined. Okay? All right. Now, don't worry about the arrow going backwards. We're going to learn later how we can turn this back into that. But that's for another day. Okay? Now, in this exercise, what they're doing is they're trying to get you to see that when you have a different variable, you have a different unit, right? So here they're using sheep and cows, but I could just as easily say 10s plus 2c, right? But what they want you, they're writing it out in words to remind you that if you have s's and c's, are they like terms? No, you, so they cannot be combined, right? Sheep can't be combined with cows, yeah? Sheep can only be combined with other sheep. So keep that in mind. <laughs> like that one, a shall. Uh, no, it's not. All right. So sheep and cows. You cannot combine the two. Okay? But you can expand these. If you have four lots of sheep, that's the same as saying four times the number of sheep, right? If you have four lots of cows, it's saying four times the cows. So that's what's happening here. We're going to take four times the ten sheep and four times the two cows, which means four times ten gives us how many sheep? Forty and four times two gives us how many cows? Eight, eight. eight cows. Okay. 
So they're just doing it with words to try to make it more clear. Okay. Good job. Now, they could combine these if they were saying animals, but they're not saying animals, they're saying sheep and cows. But if they were just saying animals, that'd be different, yeah? Okay. Okay, let me get away from the sheep and cows. Nobody likes the cows. What? Okay, so here we go. We're going to look at a couple with numbers. So we already did that one, so let's look at this one. All right? So, do I have a bracket? Yes. Look first where? Inside. Inside, Inside I have X minus 2. Can I subtract a 2 from that X? No. No. Good. What do I look for next that there isn't? So no exponent. What do I look last, which is most common? The coefficient. And I know that that three is a coefficient because it's right up against the the bracket. No, no, no symbol between them, right? Okay, so I'm going to take that three times how many of the terms inside? All of them. How many terms do I have inside? Two. Two. Good. So... First, I'll take the 3 times the x, and 3 times an x just gives me what? 3x. 3x. Excellent. Then I take the 3 times the negative 2. Positive times a negative becomes a negative, negative and 3 times 2 is 6. six. Can I now combine that 3 and 6? No. no, because that's not a 3. It's a 3x and a negative 6, right? They're not like terms. What if it was just a plain old 3 with no x? Then can I combine it with a 6? You yes. bet. But I would have already done that, wouldn't I? Yes. Okay? So keep that in mind. That's the reason we do that in that particular order is because you want to keep it simple. All right? Good deal. Let's see what else they give us. I should just make up some. There they go. They're showing you all the multiplication. Here we go. Ready? So do I have a bracket? Yes. Yes. So where do I look first? Inside, inside I have x minus 4. Can I subtract a 4 from an x? No, no. no they are not. What are they called? Like, oh, that's our, like terms. terms. There you go. They're not like terms. Is there an exponent on the bracket? No. No, Is, they're, they're not going to be, but you need to get used to looking for them because there will be next year, but still, you know, closer to next year than you'd think. Then, is there a coefficient? Yes. What's my coefficient? Five. Five. I need to multiply that five times how many of the things inside? All of them. All of them. So first, I'll simply take, whoops, i got to turn my thing on. First, I'll take the five times the x, which gives me what? 5x. Five five x. Second, I'll take the five times the negative four. Positive times a negative gives me a negative. And five times four is 20. Now, can I combine that 5x and negative 20? No. Nope. So you're done. That's your answer. How easy is your life right now? Don't you wish all your classes were this easy? Come on. All right. Now, let me get you one that we can work together. And, well, y'all are going to do the work. So there you see, they're just multiplying it out. And they get the same answer we got. This is gross. It's disgusting. All right, here we go. Ready? No, oh, don't fill in the gaps. I don't like that. They're all filling. All right, hold on. I'm the, what I'm gonna, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to make some up. We're going to put them on. All right? Yay. Here we go. Y'all are still going to have to do education perfect because it's the only homework. Here we go. So what if you have... Okay. Negative two. Oh, yeah, I did. I threw a sign. You better watch them. Oh. Right? Negative two times a minus four, go. You got 30 seconds and then I'm gonna call on somebody. Totally serious, just be all it takes. See, it should be all it takes, isn't it? You should be proud. So your homework is education perfect, and I'm going to sign it for you right now. I need it done quickly. Do we meet tomorrow?